would have been happy to let Gavin lead the service this morning. He didn't want to. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Isn't this a gorgeous day that the Lord has made? And we will rejoice and be glad in it. I would like, if any of our young people are with us, I know today is the day that we're doing Sunday school, so um, if you want to head down, um, we'll go ahead because we have our meeting and then a lunch. So um, let's, uh, let's get y'all settled. Awesome. I do not know what it is you come expecting this morning, and I caution you, you may not get what you want. Uh, but I pray that each one of us will get exactly what it is that we need. This morning, we will be using the Holy Communion setting four, as found in our uh, ELW, the Cranberry Book, and also on the screen. I would invite you, as you are able, to please stand for the order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of God, who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us, and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you, we have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you, and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Our gathering hymn, number 808, Lord Jesus, You Shall Be My Song.
Jesus Christ and the promised gifts of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We are seated and turn our attention to the message of the Scriptures. Good morning. Today we begin with our responsive psalm, Psalm 22. You who fear the Lord, give praise. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. Stand in awe of the Lord, all you offspring of Israel. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall be to be satisfied, that those who seek the Lord may be praised. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, The Lord has acted. Here ends the psalm. This morning's second reading is taken from Romans chapter 4. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be their, the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distress distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. Gospel 
Gospel according to Mark, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all of this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes to the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated, yeah. Oh, there's so much meaty stuff in this gospel reading this morning. And uh, as I was preparing for today, I, I was keeping in mind that this is our first annual general meeting together, um, not our first potluck. Um, <clears throat> but we have uh, lots on our plate as a faith community. So I was holding that in, in, my, in my thoughts and in my heart this week. Also, I was holding the fact that um, Jesus in this gospel calls us to pick up our cross. Uh, and I was going to uh, share with the children this morning, uh, we were gonna do a little, see if we could find a bunch of crosses in the sanctuary. Um, but the main cross that I wanted us to remember that we carry with us is the cross that we were marked with in our baptism. So as I share with you this devotion today from Father Richard Rohr, I would welcome you to remember that cross uh, that is on your forehead that was recently marked with ashes, um, but that we remember as we walk in this world. Let us pray. Holy and mighty God, may our hearts receive all you have to offer us this day, for holy and sacred is your word. Amen. So Father Richard Rohr writes, Brian McLaren points to Jesus' time in the wilderness as essential to his spiritual journey. One that he invites his disciples to engage in as well. And he writes, Jesus needed that time of preparation in the wilderness. He needed to get his mission clear in his own heart so that he wouldn't be captivated by the expectations of adoring fans or intimidated by the threats of furious critics. If we dare to follow Jesus and proclaim the radical dimensions of God's good news as he did, we will face the same twin dangers of domestication and intimidation. Soon, Jesus began inviting select individuals to become his followers. And to become disciples of a rabbi meant entering a rigorous program of transformation, learning a new way of life, a new set of values and skills. 
It meant facing a new set of dangers on the road. Once they were thoroughly apprenticed as disciples, they would then be sent out as apostles to spread the rabbi's controversial and challenging message everywhere. One did not say yes to discipleship lightly. Contemplative writer Sister Joyce Rupp reflects on Jesus' difficult teaching for his followers to take up their cross and follow him. And she asks, what did the crowd following Jesus think when he made this statement? Take up your cross and follow me. Did they wonder what carrying the cross meant? Did they have second thoughts about accompanying him? Jesus wanted his, his followers to know that the journey they would make involved knowing and enlivening the teachings he advocated. In other words, Jesus was cautioning them, if you decide to give yourselves to what truly counts in this life, it will cost you. You will feel these teachings to be burdensome at times, just like the weight of a cross. We can't just sit on the roadside of life and call ourselves followers of Jesus. We are to do more than esteem him for his generous love and dedicated service. We do not hear Jesus grumbling about the challenges and demands of his way of life. We do not see him talking a good talk, but doing nothing about it. He describes his vision and then encourages others to join him in moving those teachings into actions. McLaren invites us to join an adventurous and unknown journey in the spirit of Jesus' first disciples. The word Christian is more familiar to us today than the word disciple. These days, Christian often seems to apply more to the kinds of people who would push Jesus off a cliff than it does his true followers. Perhaps the time has come to rediscover the power and challenge of that earlier, more primary word, disciple, which occurs over 250 times in the New Testament, in contrast to the word Christian, which occurs only three times. Maybe those statistics are trying to tell us something. To be alive in the adventure of Jesus is to hear that challenging good news of today and to receive that thrilling invitation to follow him as a disciple. I pray you hold something from this uh, message this morning because uh, we have some talk to do about our future as this faith community. So let us take heart. Let us be reminded that uh, we are not just followers offering platitude, uh, but we are indeed disciples who walk a road that is challenging and I did bold that line. We do not hear Jesus grumbling about the challenges and demands of this way of life. So I pray too that we can somehow turn our grumbling into joy. So may it be. Amen. Let us sing what a friend we have in Jesus.
us pray. Trusting in God's promise to conceal all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. We turn to you for meaning, holy God. Nurture in your children the gifts of the Spirit poured out in baptism. Let the mind of Christ guide the church. Give wisdom and discernment to our bishops, pastors, deacons, teachers, and leaders. Stir in us, we pray. We turn to you for renewal. Save lives and ecosystems threatened by pollution and a changing climate. Cleanse the earth's waters and restore the soil. Preserve rainforests, deserts, and wildlife that generations to come may cherish your creation. Stir in us, we pray. Move within each heart. We turn to you for justice. Uphold the worth and dignity of every person, especially any who experience hatred and rejection because of gender, ability, sexual orientation, color, ethnicity, or religion. Stir in us, we pray. Move with your heart. We turn to you for healing. Send compassionate helpers to any who suffer because of war and violence. Shelter unhoused people. Befriend those who are lonely. Bring hope to any in despair and console the sick, especially Linda Weddow, Len Noel, Sarah Bragg, Greg Rule, Chase Mountain, Kathleen Widmeyer, Doug Bender, Florence Burr, Maria Geit, Mary Grawlman, and Marie Peffer. Stir in us, we pray. Move within each heart. We turn to you for purpose. Remind us of your faithfulness to this congregation. Increase our trust in your guidance and keep us near the cross. Grant that our acts of service will express Christ's sacrificial love. Stir in us, we pray. Move within each heart. We turn to you for peace. We honor the saints who lived in service to others, especially Lloyd Widmeyer. Inspire us by their example until you gather us into your kingdom. Stir in us, we pray. Move within each heart. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloveds, as our offerings are being collected and brought forward, we are reminded of God's abundant love for us. These gifts of time, talent, and treasure we lift up to our Creator, for these are the offerings of our lives our livelihoods, and the bounty of the earth. All that we are, we give for the feeding and healing of the world. Let us pray together. Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. 
Bless these gifts that we have gathered, that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks and praise to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. was in the night in which our Savior was betrayed, that he took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his friends, to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, and it's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. So every time we drink, we do it in remembrance of him. And now we pray together the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You beloveds are welcome guests at the Lord's table. It doesn't matter where you're from, who your parents are, what you wear, or who you love. This is the Lord's table, and all are welcome guests. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. aisles to make their way up the center and for the center aisles to follow in behind.
I would invite you to stand as you are able, please. May this bread of life and cup of salvation empower you to live by power of the Spirit today and to eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we could ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen.